You see, when we set up wrong goals, that led us to having wrong results. We began to have salvation numbers to boast about. Some churches would say, oh, I've seen more people saved than live in this entire city or this entire state, but they're not attending the church and then they make excuses for where they've gone. Jesus didn't do that. Uh, they want to show off numbers. Well, I had this many in church. We have the largest Sunday school in the world. Uh, they have big, beautiful buildings and they are kept busy taking care of a building a building that might seat 500 or 1,000, and they have 50 or 100 attending. And so we're struck with that. We have uh, built a ministry that makes us look good, but ties us down and gets us off the real goal of our work. Our goal is um, to get the gospel to the world. But if they offend people and they leave, then how do they pay for the church building? If they ask people to take up the cross and to follow Jesus, won't that offend people? They have to be so careful. We end up developing parasitic people that depend on us to think for them and trust them. They trust, we tell them to trust us to guide them, but we don't have time to guide a lot of people. It's amazing Jesus spent 80% of his time with 20% of his people. That's really not true. He probably spent 90% of his time with, uh, with uh, 3% of his people, 1% of his people. You know, you ever notice he, he had 12, and of the 12, he had three. Uh, he would, even when Judas betrayed him and all that happened, he goes to the garden, he tells the gate, y'all stay here. You three come with me. He goes up on a mountain, three go with him. There are three guys that are always around him, and he's always investing in them and helping them be all that they can be. So somewhere along the way, we have to be careful. We have come up with excuses not to train people. And I want to challenge you to kind of get over that. You know, we think things like, well, no one else can do it as well as I can. It's, it takes longer to teach them to do this than it does for me to do it. Now, I don't want to see you give up your pulpit time to train people. I wouldn't do that. I think that's the time you need to preach and bless the 80% that only get 20% of your time. So I really don't think you need to put a young preacher can't preach in front of everybody. That's not the point. But you got other times during the week. you got other classes. you got Sunday school. You've got tons of places where he can learn new skills and learn how to work with the ministry. We say they'll never do it as well as I can. Uh, we say there are no good church members or I can't find any. We come up with a plethora of fullness of excuses that keeps us from having to train men. Gentlemen, I end this week with this thought for you, please. God has given you a gifted position. What a wonderful privilege you have. Now, they're out there and they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear how to serve God. They need to know how to be used of God. And I'm challenging you to look and see how you could help them be all that God called them to be.